This episode is sponsored by Swap.com. Swap.com makes it easier than ever to buy and sell new and pre-owned clothing, toys, video games, and much more all from the comfort of your home. Stop using half your day going through racks and racks of clothes without finding what you want. Instead, go to Swap.com and search any brand and see what's available in seconds, and even narrow the search results to your specific needs. Even better, there is a return policy, so if the clothing you buy does not fit, you can return your item without any hassle. I am proud to announce that Swap.com is exclusively offering all of you a 40% off discount code for your first order on the site, plus free shipping if the order is over $10. The promo code is SCARY40 and the code is valid through February 28, 2018. Please check the description for more information. My coworker, I will call her Jane, is 33 years old, a virgin, and a very devout Christian. Her family is very strict and very religious. I'm not bashing on the religion in any way. I was raised a Christian myself. These people though, they just seem to take their beliefs to a new extreme. Think of them as the Flanders from The Simpsons. I mentioned that Jane is a virgin because she has honestly never even had a boyfriend before. She's been on a few dating websites as of late, but she's usually very strict when it comes to the types of guys she would date. She can be kind of stuck up, which has gained her a little popularity. She recently meets a guy on OkCupid. Let's call him Miguel. Miguel claims to live in a bigger city than ours, an hour away. We are in the middle of nowhere in Kansas. And that he was 35 years old, also claims to be a virgin, and takes an interest in Jane. They chat for a while, and she's very excited. Once they establish a fondness for each other, he claims that he has $250,000 in savings and a job that pays $65 an hour. He has a nice apartment and two cars, one of which is a 69 Dodge Charger. Sounds too good to be true, right? We all agree, everyone but her. They agree to meet for a first date, and he says he'll drive down here to see her. While driving down here, he claims to get into an accident on the interstate and is left hospitalized. Jane is devastated. The rest of us, who she was telling this to, all just assume that he was lying to her and that this was his way of getting out of the date and her finding out that he was a scum. We didn't think there would be any more communication afterwards. We were wrong. They continued talking, and shortly after getting out of the hospital, he claimed he was hit by a car crossing the street. His life apparently took a turn for the worst, as he claimed he was laid off from his job. His apartment was burglarized, and all of his money and his other car were seized by the IRS due to a misunderstanding in his taxes from a few years back. Completely believable stories, right? Much to our dismay, Jane decides she doesn't care about these things, and she is willing to continue talking to the man. He soon starts calling her daily, and coming over once a week to visit her at work. At this point, we get to meet this guy, and he comes off as your typical loser, with a beer belly who lays around on the couch all day, yelling at his woman to bring him a beer. Despite all the money he claims to have, he wears clothes that are way too big for him, usually sweatpants and flip-flops. 
This earned him the nickname Flip Flops amongst us at work. He has problems making eye contact with people when he talks to them. And he has the creepiest smile. We know right away that he doesn't seem very trustworthy. Three weeks into their relationship, he shows up at our workplace and proposes to Jane. She gladly agrees as we all shake our heads in disbelief. He tells us he got a new job, working for Microsoft down in his city. We did our research. There is no Microsoft jobs over there, unless you are working and selling products at Best Buy. And he tells her that he's now seeing a therapist for his anger and jealousy issues. Many red flags are going off in our heads at this point, but Jane doesn't seem to mind any of it. He moves down here to be with her after claiming that his family disowned him for wanting to marry a Christian, and that's the reason why she'll never get to meet them. As if this isn't ridiculous and over-the-top enough, things start to get creepier from here. He tells us that he has a new job for $25 an hour as the head engineer at Exide Manufacturing. The head of the HR at Exide is actually a relative of a friend of ours, so we asked her about this. They never heard of this man, and the position he claims he has doesn't exist. We tried to tell Jane about it, but she brushes off all of our comments and claims that we are thinking too much about it and we're just jealous. He starts picking her up and dropping her off from work every single day as well as picking her up for all of her lunches. She still believes he has a full-time job and that he's only doing this because of how much he loves her. We start to feel that he's just wanting to know where she is at at all times. He asks the maintenance man at our work after their first meeting to be the best man at his wedding. This doesn't strike Jane as odd because apparently Miguel is just untrusting of most people and has no friends of his own. They all want him for his money. Her parents loan him their spare van so he can use that to drive from now on. To our shock, her parents are already buying baby clothes and supplies for the couple. They are completely won over by the man. I think they're just blinded by the fact that their daughter finally has someone that will give them grandkids, which is a really sad thought. By this point, we've noticed her personality growing slightly more stressed and depressed as time goes on. By now, you're probably thinking, oh, she's just another dumb girl who picked up a sleazeball guy who's milking her for all she's worth. And you're definitely not wrong. We all thought the same thing. Until one day, she dropped this little bomb on us. He has just recently told her that he used to be a part of special operations in the military, the Air Force to be exact, and they've decided that they want him to work for them again. They'll pay him $75,000 for working three days, or three weeks, or three months. The story always changes. Something she doesn't find suspicious at all. The job would involve him testing military equipment that's too dangerous and could be life-threatening. He agrees to the work, and we all think he's copping out of the relationship. She then tells us that if she wishes to remain in contact with him, they'll have to get married as soon as possible, and she'll have to be prepared to move away with him. She explains that the military has been calling her and making stops at their house to explain to her that she'll have to marry him immediately and she needs to be prepared to move to an undisclosed location at any given moment. From that location, she'll not be allowed to make any contact with friends or family since all that is going on is top secret and she has to prove that she can be trusted. Obviously, all of us are now alarmed. Everyone but her. 
and her family, they are delighted that she's with the military man and are proud that she gets to be a part of something much bigger. The rest of us sane people are trying to figure out what on earth he can be plotting. Is she going to be hijacked into human trafficking? Is he going to murder her? One of our co-workers has just called the human trafficking hotline. And they think that this definitely sounds like something they've seen before. Unfortunately, they can't do anything about it until he actually makes a move and takes her. We're looking into contacting our local police to see if there's anything that can be done about this before she gets the phone call that tells her when they had to make their move. This is also crazy. We don't know what to expect or just what danger she's really in. Any thoughts would be appreciated. The first time I met Miguel, it was on a freight day at work. We all work in a retail store. Jane and the rest of her department had just finished their freight and they were allowed to go home for the day. I grumbled as I worked in the department next to them and had to finish my freight by myself. I work right next to the time clock, so I saw Jane clock out. About 10 minutes later, a guy shows up in sweatpants and flip-flops. He has this creepy smile towards me and wanders around the department. I continue putting up my freight. He then walks up to me and hands me a Pepsi. Can you give this to Jane, please? Oh, sorry, dude. She just clocked out for the day. What? His face dropped as he darted to the front door. I shrugged it off and continued working. A few minutes later, he comes back, slightly flustered. Her car is still out there. She's still here. I gave him a funny look and stated that I saw her clock out. He stormed off again. A few moments later, he returns, furious. Her car is still out there. Where is she? I was a bit alarmed. Jane is pretty obese, so I thought to myself, it was probably taking her that long to get across the store. Do I need to get a manager on you? Where is Jane? Fortunately for me, my boyfriend showed up at the time. He expected me to get off at the same time as the rest of my co-workers, so he came in trying to find me. Did you say Jane? I just saw her in the parking lot. Flip-flop stormed out as my boyfriend and I gave each other a what-the-fuck look. The next morning, Miguel showed up at work and proposed to Jane in our stockroom as we were unpacking boxes. My boyfriend laughed when I told him this. He wasn't surprised that Jane was dating that Neanderthal. Looking back on it now, I think that the fact that Jane could slip through this guy's grasp and actually do something unnoticed by him freaked him out. He didn't have as much control as he wanted that might have instigated his proposal, making him want to make sure he had complete control over her, which is a terrifying thought. As you can imagine, a lot has happened over this past month, and that's why I'm here now to let you all know just what happened since. To those who want the short answer, she is fine now, and the situation is nearly resolved. Long answer, keep listening. Why not hire a private investigator? Well, quite frankly, I don't have the kind of money for that. Why don't you and your coworkers all pitch in to get one? Honestly, the majority of my coworkers really don't like Jane, and that's putting it nicely. I know this will sound cruel, but most of them were just counting down the days until they didn't have to see her anymore. She's always had this bad habit of rubbing people the wrong way. Is she a naive girl? Yes. Is she stupid? Also yes. 
Ever since I've met her, she's always insisted on being the first to give relationship advice to me and many others, despite having no experience on her own. She's actually the first to throw in her opinion and give advice on most subjects, usually on stuff that she only thinks she knows everything about. She comes off as a know-it-all and is very arrogant. Having done missionary trips in Africa before, she assumes she's seen the worst of humanity and she's more than knowledgeable of the evil of the world. She also likes to butt in everybody's business, whether she's welcome or not. A few co-workers have tried setting her up on dates before and when she comes back from them, she is usually furious and gives a lecture on how dare you think he was good enough for me. Now, with these bits of info, I will continue on to the story. Around the same time this story was originally posted, I think the same weekend, it turns out that Jane and Miguel had had a secret wedding ceremony at her church and were now married. Yes, there was a certificate and everything. Full-blown, legally binding marriage. None of his friends or family were present. Only Jane's family and their pastor. She hid it from the rest of us for about a week. During these days of us being in the dark, we noticed a lot of mood shifts with her. One day, she would come in beaming and happy the road was perfect for her. The next day, we could see the stress and tell something was wrong. A few of us also noted at this same time that both Jane's and Miguel's Facebook accounts had been deleted. He had recently made an account, no pictures of him, just pictures of his nice cars. He rarely used it and all of his family on the account looked nothing like him. He claims he's Spanish, but all of his family were very distinctively Mexican looking. We were afraid that he wasn't wanting her to give too much information about their situation, movements, and whereabouts when he kidnapped her. She confided in a co-worker that he had a lot of outburst, and though he hadn't been violent, he had suddenly become a different person. We tried warning her that he was dangerous, but she assured us that he was just insecure from having been cheated on in so many past relationships and that it was nothing. It was sad to say she was definitely in an abusive relationship. The saddest part is seeing a situation like this and knowing that they can only help themselves at this point when they refuse to listen to everyone else. Jane also had a pet cat that she's had for nearly eight years at this point. Miguel was always getting angry at the cat, accusing Jane of loving it more than him. Her cat likes to paw at its food bowl when you pour food into it, and one day, as he was trying to feed it, she playfully pawed. He went into a rage, stating that the cat was trying to attack him, and as punishment, it should go without food. For days when Jane would come home from work, she would notice her cat getting more depressed, and it would cry a lot more. He would assure Jane, The cat is fine. I fed it twice today. Don't feed it or I'll get fat. He was trying to starve and was probably abusing her poor cat. And she didn't see this as a sign to leave the asshole? Shortly after these incidents, Jane wound up incredibly sick and had to be rushed to the emergency room. She had a high fever, but that is the extent that she told us at work. She didn't return for three days. We were terrified that he had tried to poison her or something to get rid of her. She didn't find it strange at all that he wasn't at work for the days she was sick at home. 
It was at this time that word made it to our work that they had been married. She came back to work and seemed to be fine. Around this time, Miguel got a phone call from the military stating that he had to report to Fort Scott for top secret weapons testing. And shortly after this, they would have to prepare for their big move. I dare you to look up Fort Scott, Kansas and see if that seems like the kind of place that would do super dangerous top secret military weapons testing. I couldn't begin to tell you how many lies he's told that could be easily disproven by a simple Google search. She never questioned him about any of this. Unfortunately for him, the family van of hers that he'd been driving had broken down on his way to the test site, and her father had to come bring him home. By pure luck, the military called afterwards and told him that the equipment that he was testing had exploded and killed a few men, so he was so lucky to have not turned up that day. They changed his plans, and his next top secret mission would be next April, and it would be then that he and Jane would get to move. With this said, I would like to point out that I do get along with Jane. I do understand some of where she's coming from, and I don't blame the rest of my co-workers one bit for not liking her. A few of us still agree though, that as annoying as she could be, and despite how stupid she's being, still, she doesn't deserve to be murdered or trafficked or whatever would happen to her by this creepy ass guy. So for those of us that cared, we were glad that we at least had until April to figure out what we could do. To continue from here, I will explain that before they were married, Jane was surprisingly good at keeping to her beliefs. Miguel had to live with another man from Jane's church and not with her, so as to keep their marriage bed sacred and to not be tempted. Miguel made it abundantly clear to Jane that he hated these arrangements and would try to start fights whenever it was made clear that he wasn't going to get laid anytime soon. A week or so after the van broke down, a letter arrived at the house of the man Miguel had been staying with. It was inquiring about why he had missed a court date for giving away his parental rights back to his wife. Fortunately, this man from the church actually had common sense, so he met up with one of Jane's sisters to discuss what to do. Despite all of her family fully loving and supporting the couple, one of her sisters was actually hesitant and showed some doubts. There's a sign of intelligent life after all. Jane's sister used this information to find Miguel's wife on Facebook and talk to her while the churchman ran a $30 background check on Miguel. Surprisingly, this one also turned up nothing. He had to shell out $200 for a real background check that safely showed how much of Miguel had said about himself was completely bullshit. Miguel had been married twice up to this point. He had four children with his first wife and they both had given up custody of the kids who are now living in Miguel's parents' house. The real reason that Jane was never going to meet his family. He had one kid with his most recent wife and they had just gotten divorced. Their divorce was finalized a few days before Miguel and Jane's wedding. Sadly, this is all of the information that we co-workers were able to find out that turned up in the background check. No one has told us anything else. Jane's sister printed out the copies of the marriage certificates and they got the church together to show them to Jane. They were all able to convince her 
that Miguel was a lying dirtbag and helped kick him out of the house. He denied all of it until he was hauled away to a psych ward for suicide watch that night. He was released a few days later after proving himself sane. Jane issued a no contact order and had cut off all communication with him as she proceeds to get an annulment. Jane was devastated for about a week, but she's mostly over it now. And the hardest part of the situation was dealing with a blow to her ego, knowing how stupid she had been. Sadly, this didn't last very long as she now boldly tells everyone the tale of how strong she is for going through all of this and how brave she was. She assures everyone that Miguel was a master con artist and he was able to fool everyone. Her family and church back her up in all of these claims, seeing as they were all full too. To this day, I don't think she really learned anything of value from this situation. Just that she likes having everyone pat her on the back and tell her how brave she is. The only thing that Jane and her church really cared about is that Miguel had lied about being married. To this day, I can't find out what her plans were once they disappeared in April. She is still holding no contact with him and so I cannot find out this information. Jane's just so distraught over the fact that he wasn't the 35-year-old version of her dreams to care about any danger she could have been in. So I'm unsure if it will ever be answered if this man is a murderer or a human trafficker or something else. All we know is that he is definitely a lazy bum, a deadbeat dad, and an abusive asshole. And stupid. Very, very stupid. We also believe that he genuinely believes all of his lies since he was so insistent on all of them being true up until court time, as far as we can see. Now purely for your amusement, here is a list of some lies he's told her that she believed wholeheartedly that I haven't mentioned. He claims to be a black belt in many martial arts which helped him get his super high rank in the military. He offered to try teaching her karate once, but she hurt herself at the very start, and no attempt had been made since. He also claims to be a world championship gamer, Halo being his top game. He's won many competitions, and as a result, he's worked in the development in a few of the other Halo games and has many ties to Microsoft, hence why he's gotten so many jobs there so easily. At one point, Jane did see in the mail for him a letter about owing child support. Upon questioning him, he assured her that he was a virgin and had previously adopted the child of a former girlfriend of his. He loved the child dearly and it needed a father figure. We had a festival in town in the summertime, and he was offered over $200 a day to help set up for it. She came home one day and found him not working at the festival. He said he had to leave because he had gotten a heat stroke. She rushed him to the ER, where they stayed for hours, because no matter how much they tried, no signs of heat stroke were found. She spent days nursing him back to health as he was bedridden. I think it was the 69 Dodge Charger that he claimed that he had at the beginning of the story that was involved in the car accident he'd also had at the beginning. He had to make a sudden trip back home to Wichita one day and said he was picking up the Charger from the impound lot. Jane was excited. She wanted to fix it up and couldn't wait to show it off and drive it around. Later that same day, he called and said it was too damaged, so he had to scrap it for parts and the money had to go to the fee for holding it. 
Jane was crushed. About a month later, when I saw him driving around in her family's car, I mentioned that if he no longer had any vehicle of his own, the IRS would have to give him back one of his cars. Suddenly, it turned out that the Charger wasn't scrapped at all. It was actually being redone in Jane's favorite colors and was going to be a wedding gift to her. Oh, happy day. Upon talking to Jane yesterday, she now fancies herself an expert in the early signs of an abusive relationship and is wanting to write a book on the subject. I think it's a great idea. There aren't really any books out there on abusive relationships and I would love to be the voice of it, she says. Being a writer, I cringe at the very thought, but if she does decide to go with these plans, I will personally put a link up to it for all of you to see, just so we can let Jane know what we think of this situation.